I want to start by looking at this principle. This first principle in hiring, Elliot's observation was that most hiring managers left to their own devices have a difficult time hiring, hiring anyone at or immediately below their level. At or immediately below their level. To illustrate this visually, this is what it looks like. We have an open position, nine month time span. Hiring manager, appropriately at stratum three. Yet the principal we just looked at said, you know, this is gonna be a difficult decision for this hiring manager to make. What's going through the mind of this hiring manager? who, by the way, has seen the compensation package. Why is this a difficult decision to make for this hiring manager? What is it about their time spans that make this a difficult decision? What is it about the proximity of their time spans that make this a difficult decision? Who had that comment just a second ago? They're gonna take over. What's going through the mind of the hiring manager is, this might be my replacement. Boss, I tell you what, Let's bring in somebody, I'll save you a ton of overhead. Let's bring in somebody with three months time span capability. I know they're gonna to have to have nine month decisions to make and nine month problems to solve, but let's bring in someone with three month time span capability. They'll still be a supervisor. I'll hold their hand, I'll wipe their nose and everything will be fine. How many of you have fallen for that before? In the effort to save money, you bring in someone. In fact, Elliot says one of the biggest mistakes that most companies make is underestimating the time span capability required in the role. Enter the role of the manager once removed. If there's any change in your hiring protocol, it would be this, to bring in the manager once removed, two stratum layers above the open role. This would be the hiring manager's manager. Between the hiring manager and the manager once removed, in examining the talent pool, who's got the best perspective on what's really required for the role? The hiring manager or the manager once removed? Manager once removed. In fact, is the manager once removed threatened by this nine month time span hire? Not at all. So what would be the role of the manager once removed in this hiring protocol? Very specifically, the manager once removed is there to identify the sweet spot in the candidate pool. Even more specifically, it is the manager once removed who creates the talent pool. Who still makes the hire? Hiring manager still makes the hire. Why? Because we're going to hold the hiring manager accountable for the output on the team. The hiring manager has to have minimum veto authority as to who's on the team, or else we can't hold them accountable for the output of that team. But here's another very interesting question. This hiring manager is about to make a decision. This decision could be a good decision, or it could be a poor decision. Who do I hold accountable for the quality of the decision made by the hiring manager? Who? The manager once removed, why? He's the hiring manager's manager, and who do we hold accountable for the hiring manager's productivity or output? Is the manager. It is the manager once removed I hold accountable for the quality of the decision made by the hiring manager. That changes the whole game. See, a lot of managers once removed say, Karen, you're the hiring manager, good luck. I hope you write a role description. I hope you get some interview questions written. Uh, oh, by the way, just send me the last three resumes. I'd like to see you know, who it is you're actually hiring. By the time Karen delivers those last three candidates, what's the problem? Probably too low in the candidate pool. Elliot says you've got to turn this upside down. It is the manager once removed that quarterbacks this hiring protocol. I'm the one on the hook to make sure a role description gets written. Now, do I have to write the role description? Not necessarily, unless I like it. But is it my accountability that a role description gets written? Is it also my accountability that we write some interview questions, a good solid bank of interview questions that have some relation to the work? Because I'm the one accountable for that decision. I'm gonna make sure that that stuff happens. Might I also quarterback a hiring team and select people to be on that hiring team. How many have ever been on a hiring team before? Okay, uh, so here's the way it works. Uh, Mark, we've got a candidate down, down at the end of the hallway. Everybody's talked to him and they like him. Can you go down and see if you like him too? 
That's usually the way we get on the hiring team. <laughs> However, if I'm accountable for a decision that Mark makes, is that the way I'm going to approach Mark? No, I'm going to approach him way ahead of time. Mark, next week, we've got a slate of candidates coming in. We spent some time writing a role description. We've created a bank of interview questions. You're a technical expert in our company. I'd like you to focus on the technical questions that we've developed here. And in fact, if you've got some more technical questions because you're the technical guy, we want you to add those questions in. Now, why would I spend the time doing that? Because I'm accountable for his decisions that he's making in that process. It is the manager held accountable for the output of other people. 